Okay, so this is where we are right now with this. Um, to give you quick background, um, Mike threw together uh, uh, a draft for us. Um, I first went through with, with some light edits because um, I didn't have a lot of time, but then I went decided to revisit it later. And just because I felt like it was hard to read with the suggestions in there, I went ahead and just did like a, a rewrite of the first few paragraphs anyway. Um, that's pretty much it. The, I did not do that throughout. I just, I kept my smaller edits for the rest of it. They, it, there wasn't as much there. Um, I had this one question about whether we even want to bring up the parking garage since it's, um, a sore subject, I guess you could say. Um, and that's, that's all I've got for thoughts right now. Uh, what do other people think about the chapter and um yeah yeah i i kirby i liked it i uh, had a chance to look at your rewrites um i i think the same kind of thing about the garage or the not the garage the uh, the hotel question and i'm i guess the other question i have is like how far down the road do we need to be knowing that we're going to have some community input and some other things like does it need to be in our final draft? What is it we're trying to get to just as a newer member? We, at this stage, I think we do want it to be in pretty good shape um, because I don't know how much we're going to be. Uh, I don't like counting on us doing anything like spinning, spinning. I don't like counting on, on spending a bunch of extra time later. I mean, that might happen, but it might not. So I'm more comfortable when we, pass these out for them to be at least like near the kind of final shape that we would like. Um, and they, then they may or may not be changed later as we start to put them into the website. But I try to make sure they're as polished as, as we're comfortable with, at least for now. So no, I, you know, I guess, I guess as it relates to, I mean, I, I liked it. I, you know, the questions about the hotel, I imagine that back in the day there was, there were studies done by the city right before a bond, you know, was proposed saying that we needed a convention center hotel. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, there were studies that were done. Uh, there were a couple of studies that were done. Um, one that we had commissioned and then another one that was done. Um, the Becheras had their own that they did. It's, it's a pretty well-known um, fact that the the city of Montpelier doesn't have enough hotel rooms um, based on its you know its attract its attraction and all its other things um, maybe we could just cite the study and you know whatever its aspirational goals you know suggestions or something like that Yeah, it's a little tricky to write on the fly like this, but, uh, oh, Mike, can you mute? Um, we could we give it a shot here. If we plan to pass it out right now, or do we want to just, uh, Mike, can you hit mute? Um, like Edgar Allan Poe over here. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so yeah, we could, uh, we could just wait and do like a cursory vote next time and then polish it up before then. Does that sound good for people? And I'll just throw in a placeholder for, uh, um, um, yeah, I think Mike, if you want to, if you could throw that in we can, you know, kind of wordsmith the language and stuff. And I, I liked, I don't know what other people's thoughts were, but otherwise I, I thought it was pretty well done. 
Do, do we have any other thoughts? Do people have thoughts about a need for me to um, do a similar thing on the rest of it, or uh, or are we fine with with these bottom paragraphs? I have a couple of comments, but I'll maybe we should address that. Okay. Um, I was just, um, well, there were two things that I noticed um, in this growth in the hospitality and tourism sector paragraph. I mean, one thing I was just thinking of reading that is that um, I, I don't, I don't actually have a proposal for language to deal with this, but um, you know, we talk so much about housing and its importance for economic development. And then we're talking here about outdoor recreation as important for tourism. And just to, I don't know, somehow, I guess, I guess partly because of the Northfield Street discussion, I was thinking about it, like these two goals can be in conflict <laughs> at times, outdoor areas and housing. Now, I mean, if we don't expand any of our outdoor areas or, you know, but just to, because I feel like that's something that could be brought up if we're, you know, talking about a new housing development later, like, oh, well, this we've, we're also talking about how important outdoor recreation is to our tourism sector. So I'm just kind of a little bit worried about the conflict between those two, although I don't, again, have a proposal right at the moment of how to address that. I, I thought of that too, actually, when working on it. Um, and because there is a tension there, it's been brought up. Legally, I'm not worried about it because as we talked about the last um, city uh, council meeting, um, Mike and I both talk, touched on this. If it's in the plan as a goal, like housing, it's not like other parts of the plan can then counter that goal. Like, so if we're trying to build housing just because there might also be some trails put in somewhere, it doesn't mean the housing doesn't go in. Like that's not how the, the city plan works in, in the practical world. But even that said, I, I do, would like to get ahead of this. And, I, and I, so I think I would like to throw something in. Also, I'm not sure how much authority really the chapter has either. Um, it's more of the, the strategies and things. But, but even with those caveats, I think we could... Um, put something like a um something in like something like to to the extent that it doesn't unduly interfere with housing development or something like that so so i think the crux of that issue though like we could just talk about the expansion of the space in in public parks right the issue on northfield street has to do with private property which is you know not an issue that that's that's not a real issue that's illegal taking right if we try to grab somebody's property but we do want to see expansion of all these resources where it makes sense and i think acknowledge that you know i think one of the conversations that we all heard there was that there's a feeling that for you know that part of the city right that there needs to be some more public parks or public access to things right and i think we can say well, we need to expand that how do we do that right but that's different than you know construction that's going to take place lawfully inside areas that are zoned properly for housing. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, I think this came up, although I wasn't deeply involved in the discussions about the expansion of Hubbard Park, but, you know, there are potential housing lots there when, when Hubbard Park was expanded. So I think it can, it can come up and, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I know. Uh, so, so Gabe, what Arian's talking about is like, there are people in town who will bring up uh, a need for parks or a need to prioritize um, open space or natural resources or however you want to put it whenever housing comes up. It's, it's something that they, that, that they say, it's an argument that's made. So um, I, I think it is, I think it's nice to, to try to, to, to try, I don't know, to try to have something in here that, that, I, I like the it. language you just added. I think, I, I mean, I don't know what Arian thinks, but I mean, that, I think that's sufficient. Yeah, I think just acknowledge that I, that sounds good to me, what you added there. Just to kind of, yeah, acknowledge it even just a little bit <laughs> with what I was going for. And I think we're going to have multiple goals from time to time. 
um, you know, the really the parks plan is what's called the green print. And, you know, I think if we were looking at a project, we would want to go through and make sure that, you know, either our zoning or our master plan or city plan, you know, we want to implement that green print um, because that's our basically our outdoor recreation master plan. So um, I, I think that's really the, the benchmark from a project standpoint as we would look at a project and see how it matches with that with that plan and whether there's something and then it's a matter of tools and that's what we've talked tried to talk to or I've tried to talk to the Conservation Commission and the Parks Commission about is what tools they want to take to accomplish their green print because we can't use zoning and that's where they keep running into loggerheads is is wanting to use the zoning to accomplish the green print print which they really can't do so um, it's it's that it's going to be it's a tough balance it definitely is but I think we need to accomplish the green print making those parks on you know for example south of the uh, south of the river uh, you know this this parcel may be on the green print and may be identified as as a priority parcel to put in a park but we can't use zoning to to, to make that to build that park into reality that has to be done by working with the developers on a willing bell willing buyer willing seller basis to purchase the property and so that's that's a different process um, and so I think people just have to recognize there are going to be different tools and we may not fully build out the green print plan because we aren't timely enough about getting things in. But um, I think that's that's something that just has to be addressed over over time and addressed project by project. Um, and, and I think Alec is doing a little bit more of being proactive now. And I think that'll be that'll benefit his his getting that network built out. Um, so I think we'll have to just see and we'll have to educate people. And I think getting to Kirby's point, the, the chapter is really about, it's, it's not the, the regulatory, it's not the strategies. It is, it is trying, this is the piece the public is going to read. This is really about educating. It's about telling the story. It's about letting the public know, you know, what is economic development, why it's important, and what we're doing, you know, that, that kind of storytelling that we can put in there because this is this is where the public is supposed to learn about what is economic development what's our plan for it what's our vision for it and what are we going to do about it yeah thanks everyone so Ariane, you said a couple things so i want to make sure we don't move on if you have something else oh the other thing was just further down um the paragraph before the next section, um, our workforce profile is similar to our business profile. Um, I just, just a comment, and again, I don't, I apologize for not having my own language to suggest, but I thought it was a little bit confusing in that I wasn't sure whether we were talking about people who work in Montpelier can live in Montpelier or people who are not affluent in Montpelier can have better job opportunities. Like maybe we're talking about both, but I, I thought the paragraph was a little, I was a little confused by it. So just that comment. Okay. Um, maybe before we vote next week, I'll try to clarify this paragraph. I feel like I need to spend some time with it, but I, but I understand what you're saying. Okay, and I mean, I can take a stab at editing it too, but you, you because you do so much work for the planning commission, I feel badly, but you also are already like sort of in it, so. <laughs> <laughs> just let me yeah, know. Yeah, I, get, yeah, I get what you're saying because because I, the paragraph touches on both the things you were saying. But yeah, I think I think we should be clear when we're talking about one and the other. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we're talking about both, and that's great. But I just wasn't I wasn't a hundred percent sure reading it. Well, 
We can. Ariane, can you say what what's the two what are the two things that you're I'm reading the paragraph two and I'm realizing that it's it is kind of confusing, but I'm what is what are the two things you're getting confused? Oh well one is people who work in Montpelier but live in like Barry because they can't yeah. afford to live in Montpelier, and two is people who are not well off in Montpelier getting better job opportunities. I, I think there was something in there about that. So I, it seemed like maybe we were talking about both of the, but I wasn't clear. Right. Like creating job opportunities for less and pathways for less well-off Montpelier residents. Right. Okay. So it, it touches on both of those things, but I think we can, um, we can discuss them in ways in which it's like clearer so we can do it. Just need some like segue type language going from one topic to the next. But, uh, I can do that. So yeah, I like the idea of us just looking over it now and then giving ourselves a week to still tinker with it if we want and then vote next week. Do we have any other comments for now on it? Oh, just the one other comment was that Montpelier is misspelled sometimes. So, but I assume we can do a search and yeah, like oh, oh yeah. Word check is very weird on my computer. I've never quite figured it out. Yeah, well, it's, 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 it's on everything. It's amazing how many things my spell check just does not pick up on. I think Google Word, Google Docs is particularly tricky. Yeah, mine does it on anything, though, even on Word Docs. Oh, really? I'll, yeah, I'll write up some a memo, and I'll send it to somebody, and they'll go through and do all the spelling corrections on it because my computer my computer will say there's nothing wrong with it and then they'll go through and find all the words that are misspelled maybe yours is set to like a different language <laughs> I think I got them all unless unless Mont is misspelled somewhere but Okay. Anything else? I just want to see, does it, it doesn't really tell you if something's misspelled in the text here. Hmm. You have anything else or should we move on for now and then we'll just plan to do a quick vote next week. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Sounds good. I accidentally closed all my tabs earlier, so that's fun. Um, so the next, next thing on the agenda was to discuss doing policy outreach for solar access. And then, and then and Mike, you'd put rather than amendment language, I mean, I was, my assumption was we would be doing both together. Um, and I wasn't thinking we necessarily would do the outreach before doing amendment language, but uh, maybe I'm not remembering something from our discussion next last time. Um, do we have thoughts about what order we should do that in or something about that process? Yeah, that was what I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about. Um, what I was thinking was, you know, John and, and Jeff and everybody have has really put together some interesting educational points. And rather than starting with a draft set of zoning changes and, and arguing the case, 
maybe it's just a matter of going out to the public with what we know and what we've figured out and just start to have a conversation to go through and say before we write you write regulations to implement a policy and right now we don't really have a policy so maybe the best thing to do is to go to the public and start having a conversation we kind of know where we would go in certain well we already voted where we really want to go but if that doesn't work out then what's the public or the city council willing to kind of take as a policy step and maybe it's uh, you know and this is a second well the second question on this but you know maybe it's a matter of just doing public input with the public going to city council having the same presentation and then following that up with you know asking city council to give us direction as to what the policy should be and then we'll draft something that reflects that policy um because i think going in with the answer kind of puts city council and others in the position the same position that they're in right now which is they go in they see it and they're like that's not what we want we're going to vote no and it gets kicked back um whereas sitting down with them to go through and have the first conversation of why, what's our policy going to be is our policy to protect gardens in the middle of winter is our policy to protect you know uh no shade ever on any piece of housing or you know um what are the costs and consequences of each of those you know um john's map showing how many buildings are non-conforming you know kind of getting that information out there to go through and say and this isn't taking into account topography this isn't taking into effect a lot of pieces this is just the world we live in and you know I, I think there's there's a piece that goes in regarding education and and I think that would be an easier place to start um, the second very related question is going to be about timing um, how much of a priority is is having this conversation at this time because you know we all know you know we look on our agenda here you know we're talking about the city plan we really want to crank through the city plan this year and get that done and sometimes holding these public hearings and getting these things there it's gonna that's gonna take up a couple of public this can take up a couple of our meetings and how much time do we want to take away um, to work on the shading I mean this has been in effect for four years now mm. and impacted almost impacted it didn't impact but almost impacted gabe's project and that's it so it's, it, from a permit standpoint it's not really a high priority that said we have five housing projects that are on the horizon and how many of those would be impacted um and that's that's an unknown until we run some run some analyses um but is this is part, part of the reason, reason that it hasn't been done ah, Echo. Echo. Uh, part of that is part of the reason because uh, we just haven't had a neighbor or someone bring it up, though, or or for the administrative approval aspect of it, have we looked closely at that for every project? No, it just hasn't come up much. We've worked um, when this was proposed. You know, I could see a little bit of the writing on the wall and knew this was going to be a problem. And, you know, as I said, there was this, and there was the architectural standards were the two that I thought were very problematic. So I very conveniently maneuvered them into the major site plan, which is uh, used only on, in very limited cases, including doing large construction projects. So the architectural standards and, and the shading only come up in very few cases of which um, Gabe's project was one of them. So you have to build a new project and it has to be bigger than a certain size to qualify as a major site plan. Most of our projects are additions, renovations, sheds, porches, gazebos, changes of use. Um, very few new buildings get built. Um, you know, if you were just to think around Montpelier, uh, um, you know, uh, the timber frame was built after the zoning went into effect, but that's out in the rural district. 
Yeah. yeah. Not a big difference. Caledonia Spirits was before the zoning went into effect, so that was under the old zoning. Well, none well, of this stuff, stuff is in the building. building. Yeah. The solar, solar creates a problem with the building, which yeah. supposedly yeah. is what we want with the most. Yeah. So it's really with these infill projects where this is going to come up. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it hasn't come up very often. So, and that's, you know, that was a little bit by, by design and by how we moved it. But um, if we were to build, you know, um, the, either of the Northfield Street projects, they're, they're going to both be major site plans. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come up in other cases. The question is if it's going to be a problem in those other cases. If we're not thinking that it's going to be an immediate concern, what if we get it into the housing portion of the, of the plan and then we could kind of use that, we could kind of use that as like outreach time and more education time, we could make it like a strategy or are those too specific for, is it too specific for a strategy? Um, we could, I mean, if we had, I'm trying to think, we can always combine some of it with another public input piece. So if we, let's say we're working on the city plan and we're working our way through and by August or September, we're ready to do some public outreach on the city plan. We can always build in some public input on some zoning changes as well. Um, whether it's this issue or, you know, the next round of, of zoning changes is going to come up and maybe we just do some zoning outreach hearings that we put out that talk about a number of, of things that we want to change in the zoning. And this just is one piece of it. And we talk a little bit of policy. Well, I think the original conversation was um, that we need to get some policy input, right? And so we could kick it down to the, the latter one. It was just, just a, you know, interesting fact i went searching around i was trying to find other cities or states that have anything like this so i could see how it was uh how it compared and i couldn't i couldn't find one i mean i went to new you know nobody does i don't know who the consultant was that recommended this i understand it's based on solar panel design um but you know even even california who's the leader in in solar projects uh they stop at a certain point they don't get to this and in fact all the lawsuits or about like whether or not you can plant a tree. <laughs> They're not anything to do with us. This is this is you know really interesting. So it's almost like it's such a total anomaly that we at some point maybe it isn't a priority right now. But when we're doing the next zoning, like you almost have to ask the city council, what is it you're really trying to do? Because this was, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake. It's not benchmarked off of anything I could find anyway. Well, okay, so what do you guys think about this plan? Um, I like the idea of striking while the iron's hot. I mean, yeah, uh, like Mike said, Jeff and John recently did work on this. I, I know from my own experience, when I work on something for my day job, like a, you know, tax law thing, and then someone asked me about it a year later, I got to like, I got to do it over again. Um, so I like to try to have something, you know, in place while, while I'm still like fresh on my mind. What if we uh, with the, we we don't let anything that we're doing get in the way of any of the city plan work? Like we're going to do the city plan work as soon as it's ready. I mean, but but um, you know, sometimes we have some gaps to fill because because Mike's very busy and and can't always be working on that. So with our gap time in the next month or so, month or two. Um, we can work on some outreach about this where we put the stuff that's fresh in our minds together into some outreach. We don't necessarily need to, to publish it right away. We can publish it closer to when we think we'll do the hearings. Um, it's looking like the timing for the hearings is probably going to, it's going to make sense that we have the plan finished maybe like late summer, early fall, and then we'll do the hearings right after we're done with the plan work and that's been, you know, passed on to the consultant at that point. Cause that, that's what I'm remembering the timeline was like. Um, so, so, I mean, that's what, that's what I'm thinking we could. And, and I like the idea of doing the outreach before we start working on doing the amendment. So do some outreach stuff. Mike just mentioned 
maybe a presentation to city council, which would mean like a PowerPoint or something that we put together. And then plus, I think like an article or something, um, we could start with the article maybe and then turn the article into a, a PowerPoint thing or, or I'm assuming Mike would end up, if there is a presentation to city council on this, then Mike would doing the presenting. So maybe he can just take whatever we do for an article and turn it into his own presentation. Totally defer to you, Mike, on, on what process you want to do there. The point is we maybe put some of this down in an outreach type format in the next month or two when we have the space for it. And then we can shelf it for a couple of months after that and, and then uh, publish it and work on it further when, um, when it's time, when it's closer to time to do a hearing on this and, and consider it. How does, how does that uh, plan sound for people? Do you have any concerns or thoughts about that, Mike? No, I mean, that, that sounds, sounds like a good idea. I mean, I would, um, you know, I think what you want for outreach material is just to, you know, explain, you know, start out with the, you know, explaining the problem, what's the existing problem that we're trying to address and, you know, what we're trying to, um, what we're hoping to achieve and then giving some some background information that kind of you know identifies why this is a problem and what are some of the options that people could cons consider and then we want to figure out what people's thoughts are um and i think there's a a certain obviousness that comes out that most people will see when you start going at you know most most buildings today don't don't meet this requirement you know, and we can go through and explain that. And I think I think there's a number of ways that we can kind of present that problem that maybe invites an obvious answer. It won't make everybody happy. And I can, you know, name three or four people that automatically won't like anything that we propose. But I think it's important that we start to have that conversation before we draft the rules. It'll make the, It'll make it smoother next time. I totally, I totally agree with that. And I think it just goes to some of the conversation conversations that we've been having around like the uh, the density thing too. I like the approach of like talking about policy and talking about and inviting education, inviting conversation before we have like an actual rule thing to bring to to change, even if that's the end goal. Okay, so we'll do that. Uh, it'd, it'd probably be good to have John at the meeting when we actually talk about putting in the outreach format. Um, like I'm, I'm fine doing it, but I'll need all of the all of the research that we have so far on it. But, you know, I'd like to have that in my possession before trying to draft something. Um, I'm also open if anyone else wants to volunteer for that. Also, by the way, was not mentioning that because I wanted to hog it or anything. Um, so, so maybe, yeah, uh, we'll, next time we have John at a meeting, we'll gather all of the info we have together. Jeff, do you have like anything like notes or anything to share? Um, I would be able to put something together, um, that builds off the notes I provided to the council. Okay, good. Good. Um, that reminds me, I haven't gotten, I actually haven't gotten to sit down and read your paper, but. Jeff shared a paper that he that he wrote and published that on a similar topic um, or a planning topic. Um, okay, sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Do we have anything else on this before we move on to the next item? Okay, so the next thing is the draft outreach letter. I'll share screen. Um, And uh, so what we have so far for this is uh, Marcella made some changes. Um, I said I wasn't going to, to touch it um, and just let other people have at it. Um, it doesn't look like there's been any like significant additions or anything. Marcella just wanted to like cut some things. 
so before I go into like Marcella stuff, does any, did anybody else want to drastically alter or change any parts of this? Okay. Um, you're fine. You're, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not married to the intro and the opening, which there were comments about last week. Um, if we wanted to, to modify that, I'm open to suggestions about that. Um, okay. So let's get into Marcella's stuff. I see. Okay. Cutting that out seems yeah, fine. Yeah. So just oh, generally yeah, speaking. Yes, well, and just, just, I think they kind of, the pretty, it's really just kind of pulling, um, I just did it in an effort to make it a little bit shorter. Um, maybe a little bit simpler. I, I think that, and I didn't look, I didn't think about adding language to the top, but I do think it might be good to add a sentence about the intent of the letter up to the top rather than, you know, like more so than just let you know what we're doing. Um, maybe say something like we could, I could help think of a sentence of like, our, you know, we're intent with your letter, letter is to make you aware of A, B, and C. And then because it's a letter that is intended, I think, to be more of like just we're here and you can engage with us um, rather than outlining very specific solutions or projects other than the city plan. Um, I was thinking shorter is better and, um, and, you know, maybe I think you outlined the housing problem well, but maybe we think about shortening that just a little bit to get to the point about how we can engage the community a little bit faster. Um, that was, that was where the edits were coming from. Okay. Um, okay, so the fir first things first, uh, trying to flesh out the intro, because you mentioned that. Um, um, I would just say this. Um, yeah, you can expect and how you can engage. Maybe uh, you can expect from us in the coming year and how and how you can participate. Well, what specifically do we want to say about? participation what do we want to invite them to do come to meetings send us emails yeah i think you say all those things at the end right and then if this is uh i know it was intended to be in the bridge right so it would be printed but if they do do they do an online <laughs> version as well we could have like links to those things Yeah, I don't know. I guess the way I would just plan for it to be in print. Okay. Um, so we should add a wrapped sentence then with like the link to the website and uh, that should do it. Yeah. What's the best website to put here, Mike?
Well, that would just be the the Montpelier. I don't know. You just probably want to go out to the city of Montpelier page and pull the home page. That's, That's probably, probably yeah. yeah. Shortest, Shortest URL. URL. Yeah, www.montpelier-vt.org. Okay, people aren't going to come in if they have to find from there. there. Uh, they shouldn't. If there's one place that people usually can find, it's the the links to agendas and minutes. So I see more stuff. We took out some of my one off. Um, trying to thank you, Mike. Uh, some of the stuff that was just trying to get people energized about the thing. So yeah, sorry. I think I took out things that I felt like just weren't necessary. But I I am tend to be a heavy editor that way so i would defer if other folks feel like it would be helpful to have some of that stuff still in there um, i think it depends on the audience but i think some people do respond to with um to the cheerleader type approach mm -hmm. um, we could, other people don't um we okay. could balance guess, it just a little at the beginning a little at the end take it out of the middle I have to go tend to a four-year-old. You guys can discuss that for a second. I'll be right back. I don't know if he was pointing at one particular one or not, but I did kind of throughout take out some of the language that I felt like was editorial, maybe is the word. Um, like, you know, solving the problem will take some serious wherewithal. I think if we wanted to have that kind of language, we could do it at the top, just saying like, you know, the, the plan will be better if we have more folks engaged. And so, you know, or heads are better than one, that sort of thing. And then we could, at the end, when we say we would love to hear from you, we can, um, play that up a little bit, but I think, I just feel like it makes it longer than it should be to have. And just feels a little bit like we're telling them how to feel about the paragraph when the paragraph is very clearly written to make sure people feel like this is a problem. Does that make sense? We don't need to tell them it's, a pro you know, we just, it's clearly a problem. We don't have to also tell them it's a problem. Yeah, I think your edits make sense. Okay, and I think short is better. Shorter is better too. And just thinking about some of the conversation we had last week about what the actual problem is and what we're trying to in achieve, and it has to do with that engagement. So um, putting it up front that we want people to be involved and we want them to be involved because more ideas makes for better planning.
Okay. Uh, I think I heard most of that. Um, this, this, however, here is to signal a change. People think that that's flows. Okay. And I guess that's fine. Um, Okay. okay, so it looks like the only thing left will be uh, kind of lost my train of thought about what this the intent of this sentence was going to be. I think it was. telling people where to look, but that's at the end, I guess. Okay, anything else to change or should I, mean, I? I think there I think there was this those couple bullets at the top and maybe you were gonna go there and adding that in. I thought there was like, these are the things we're gonna go through. I was gonna add them in. I got in there today and I'm like, I don't even remember all the stuff that we're gonna, <laughs> so, so I couldn't add it. But I thought that was some of the intent it was just to telegraph a little bit of like, here's some of the big, you know, like, we certainly talked about the city plan, but what are some of the other big things that we're, we're looking at? We've got, you know, this density issue, um, you know, that's one. What, what are the other things we think we, we need to introduce at the beginning? But otherwise I thought it was good and I agree with the edits. What's another one just so I can throw in three here? Yeah, solar shading and density here, because those are going to be two things we're going to be doing outreach on, so it makes sense to, to name them specifically anyway. Um, I know you talk about the plan later, but maybe we talk about the plan here, and then we can shorten it later. or like update. Should I, should I call it the city master plan this time, Mike, since like so many people, okay, we wanna get people off of that. Okay. Just give some people a background in case you don't know. It was called the master plan for a really long time. We made the conscious decision to change it to the city plan because that's the more accurate term for what it is. Um, but people who've been around for a while and know, you know, in, in the planning area, in the public, they, they've used the term master plan. And so that's the word that they use a lot. It's the same thing as the city plan. If you, if you ever hear someone say master plan, just so you're not confused. Could you say a uh, major update of our city plan rather than a total rewrite? Um, I think the total rewrite actually is uh, important because um, some people are like, don't realize that we are totally rewriting it. And they say things like we need a total rewrite and uh -huh. they, and they're not, sh they don't realize that's what we're doing. I mean, Mike, what do you think? A little loose cannon to me. Total rewrite of the city plan, but um, you know, it's like on schedule. It's not like it's not like we're just flying by the seat of our pants. No, it's way overdue. Um, <laughs> I know. It, I mean, really, like we've we haven't had a major rewrite in a few iterations, right? So, or a couple iterations anyway. Um, 
Do, do you have thoughts, Mike? Call it a rewrite or call it a major update? I think it's more accurate to call it a total rewrite. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Okay. Gabe, did you think that we needed to make any more changes? I should just accept Marcellus. No, I, I agree with all, all the edits there. It was good. Okay. So I'll probably give it one more look yeah, over just to make sure there's not any errors anywhere. That'd be a good but, idea. Uh, but otherwise, I uh, I'll uh, Hi, I'm in the meeting. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so so I'll, I'll send it off. Uh, more or less like this after doing a review. Um, let's take a vote. Just I don't know if we let's just let's just vote on it for um, just the the sake of being thorough. And it's going through the cans. It's going to the bridge. It's going to both cans and bridge. Yeah, that was what we had said before, and yeah. that's the extent of my plan right now. Yeah. No, I I I uh, motion that we approve the letter going out. Okay. We have, second. We, second. we have a second from Marcella. Do we have any further discussion on the letter? Anybody have anything else to say before we vote? Thanks, Kirby. Yeah, no worries. Uh, thanks everyone for actually going along with this. I think it's important. Um, okay. So I don't, I don't hear any other discussions. So those in favor of approving this, uh, uh, letter outreach letter for publication. Say aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. That is done. Mostly. Okay, I stopped sharing, right? Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna get an, we have an hour left in the meeting. We have an update of the RFP uh, for the plan consultant. Then we have to consider the minutes and then we have the executive session. So if we can get to the executive session in the next 15 minutes, that would be super. Uh, with that, I'm gonna pass it to Mike for the update on the RFP. All right, this one shouldn't take too long. I was kind of hoping we'd have John here. So we, uh, we're we still trying to figure out exactly what we're, we're doing. Um, so we have our one uh, proposal. We've got one, uh, another, another team that's interested in sending in a proposal, knowing that we've got additional funds. So we're kind of a little bit betwixt and between. I'm gonna reach out to the state to see what their procurement policy says. I would like to find at least one more if we're gonna invite the other, the second group to apply. Um, yeah, I'm trying to keep everything fair as I can, um, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit tricky. So um, I'm gonna try to still work with John because he wants to put together some quick things so we can get a better proposal back to the consultants, but I also am trying to find one more um, but I'll also, as I said, I'll also reach out to the state. If the state says we have to repost, then that'll be a big inconvenience. So we can always go with the one applicant that we got. Um, there's nothing that says we have to um, repost. It just means we can't consider others. Um, and I don't think that, um, you know, I won't get into to reviewing and analyzing these um, at, at right here, right now. 
Um, but you know, it's, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a bad thing if we ended up with the with the one proposal that we did. It's just nice to have a couple options to consider, and that's all I was trying to do is just to get us a couple of things in front of us, so that way we've got opportunities to evaluate. Because this isn't other than John, this isn't none of us are an expert in this field, so it's kind of nice to get to hear from a couple of different consultants, so you get a couple of different viewpoints and perspectives, and you can kind of get an opportunity to look at it and say. You know, I really, I really like their approach. I really like their, their, the quality of their products. So that's all I was trying to do to get a few more um, folks for us to consider. But I'll contact the state because it is a, with the state grant. We do have to make sure we meet their procurement requirements. So I'll follow up with them, and then I'll follow up with John. And and you know, I think the worst case is I don't want us to get behind. So I think if we get to a point. You know, if I follow up with them, um, I'll probably work with Kirby and make, we'll, we'll have to make a decision at some point that says we're going to put this out, and I'll probably do it in as short a window as I can. If I have to do a full RFP, then I'll probably give it a really short window and make sure we contact a few people directly and do a few listservs and try to make that go, make it a go. But we'll probably have to make that decision quickly. So um, I may have to email you guys and have you guys make a decision or just if you guys want to give me the executive power to make that decision, I can also do that too um, based on what I find out. So. Personally, I could make plenty of that Will you mute for a second? Uh, yeah, so like my, my thoughts are you're going to be working with this consultant, you know, quite a bit. So you're, you're, you have way more skin in the game than us. Um, so, so I'm comfortable deferring to Mike. What do other people think? I'm comfortable too. Okay. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Months. Do you, do you want us to like to, to, vote on crunching that mic or just is is it good enough to know that we're we're fine with it it's probably good enough to know that you guys are okay with it. i'll let you guys know whatever i mean it's like i said it, i'm not picking who gets the contract i'm just picking on whether or not we're doing a, a full rfp or whether we're doing a narrow rfp and you know that's really just going to be based on what legally is required by the state and if it's you know, if they say, no, you can choose three to, you know, choosing three special folks, then I'll find, I'll work with John to find a third firm because he knows who the top GIS firms are. So we'll, we'll get three of them at least, and then we'll give a two-week window and let them submit based on the targeted RFP. If the state says no, uh, you either take the applicant that came in or you repost, in which case I just turn around and, and repost it to everybody um, and and just keep it on a shorter window and kind of take that route. So I think most of it's going to depend on what the state's up to, but I'm not, I'm not picking or hiring anybody, so I, I think it's perfectly fine. Okay, does anybody have anything um, else to ask Mike about the process? Um, did it did it work out okay working uh, with, um, was it, it was Aaron and John, right? That go okay? okay. Uh, we didn't actually end up get to work, getting to work on anything. That was a little bit of the problem. Um, so J John got hung up in Aaron, I guess there was some folks that were sick in his family and so that just turned into a, a big mess so um, we're still trying to get through that step um, but we'll try to get as I said we'll try to work out and get John and Aaron back to make a, a, a quick decision okay um. I saw the emails back and forth, but I didn't realize that um, you guys didn't get to meet at all. Uh, okay. 
Do we have anything else on this before we want to move on to the minutes? We can do that in a few minutes and then move on to the executive session. Nothing else on this? Okay. So if, if folks can take a look at, we have a couple of sets of minutes. Uh, we have April 11th and April 25th. And we'll just take those together when people are ready after reviewing them. Um, first, let us know if there's any edits to be done to the minutes and then uh, then we can approve them when when people are ready. I, w I was good with them. I wasn't in one meeting, so I can't, the first meeting, I can't comment on or fine with the one I was in. Does anybody need more time? If not, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. Or to make changes. Can I move approval of minutes where I wasn't attending? I forget if that's... I, yeah, sure. Okay, I move, move approval of the April 11th and April 25th minutes. Okay, do we have a second? I second. Do we need any further discussions? Anyone need more time? Okay, those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And it's approved, and then we can move on to executive session. So walk us through how this is going to go down, Mike. Do we just tell Orca to go away or? You're muted. So we'll have to do a motion in a second to get the, to, to go into executive session. Um, so, uh, and then pass that. So that's the first piece. Um, and I was just trying to look up really quick. to get the um, specific language, 1F. All right, so what we'll need is uh, a motion to enter executive session per 1VSA 3313A1F, which is uh, confidential attorney-client communications made for the purposes of providing professional legal services to the body. So that is one of the reasons under state law that we are allowed to go into executive session, and that is what we will be talking about. Um, so if somebody wants to make that motion, and then what will happen is when it's approved, we will end this session, and then everybody should stay by your emails, and in about a minute, I'll send out another email link so you guys can open that link and be in the executive session, so that way it's in a separate, separate room. Um, so 
if everybody's okay with that. Somebody just uh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can I help, help you out. So, so I know that they move into exactly the session based on that uh, the statute cited by Mike. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, do we have a motion to begin executive session under one VSA three one three sub A one F? Just to be totally above board. Do we have yes. that motion? Yes, that's my motion. <laughs> So moved by Gabe. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a second for Marion. So uh, we're going to close this session then, and we will start executive session after that. We do have to vote, and I'm glad I didn't leave the meeting. Uh, so. Those in favor of entering executive session, uh, according to Gabe's motion, uh, do we have do we have any discussion first? Okay. Those in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. So the motion uh, wins, and we will enter executive session and end this session. Should we also adjourn? No because that, yeah, would not work. Okay, so with that, we're gonna enter executive session uh, under a different call. Okay.